At Bennett Environmental, we offer an anaerobic digester with a secondary wastewater treatment phase that removes nitrogen on a scalable level. Our business model is to offer the dairies a monthly profit share with no capital expenditures up front. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with California Dairy Magazine reporting to you from the World Ag Expo. We've had a great lineup of, of industry speakers, a lot of dairy seminars here. I'm talking about heat stress was one of the topics. Uh, Jeff Dahl here from University of Florida, he spoke about how heat stress is not just a problem that dairy producers should be concerned with regarding our current lactating cows, but also dry cows and well, all of our right. the cattle on the, on the property, not just for animal welfare's sake, but but for production, it has an impact. So could you tell us about what, what, you've, what you've discovered? Sure. Yeah, well, we've done a series of studies now looking at the effects of dry period heat stress on the cow as she moves into that next lactation. And typically what we've seen is that the cows that are heat stressed during the entire dry period are going to produce between 8 and 10 pounds a day less milk for that entire next lactation. We also have observed that those animals are challenged from an immunological perspective, so we're gonna see greater risk for disease incidents in those cows that have been heat stressed when they're dry versus the cows that were cooled. And uh, probably the, the biggest problem is that there are significant impacts on the calf that's developing in that cow that is heat stressed during the dry period. So she's heat stressed as well. She's gonna be born at a lower weight She's going to have lower immune status early in life because she just doesn't have as efficient absorption of immunoglobulins from the colostrum that she receives. That animal is going to be challenged from a growth perspective through a year of age. And most importantly, in her first lactation, that cow is going to make 10 pounds a day less milk than her herd mate that was born to a cooled dam. Great. So now how do you... How do you propose applying this to systems for dairy producers that are currently have kind of the focus on the, the lactating cow to, of converting to that system? Sure. Well, where these effects are, are persistent, what I always say is, you know, the, the most important cow probably to cool on the farm is the dry cow, even versus our lactating cows. But we know that everybody's going to want to cool as many animals as they can. But we want to make sure that we're using those same systems that we use in our lactating cows to get them cool for the dry cows. And then we can overcome these responses and those animals will be more productive in that next lactation. And we won't see those negative impacts on the calf as she goes early in life and then through into her production. Great. Well, as temperatures start rising again this summer, this is definitely something to take into consideration. Read more about these things in California Dairy Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.